Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are reading from 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 9 is the key scripture. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, I love that. Listen, listen. Are you on your best behavior, y'all? Are you wearing your favorite, your your most distinguished attire? Are you presenting yourself with the highest level of class, poise, eloquence? What are you doing with your conversation, with your carriage, with the way you present yourself to the world? How do you come off to other people? How do they see you? What is your behavior like? What is your vocabulary like? In the most common settings. Hmm. Yeah, that's something to consider. So what I want you to think about is, are you a chosen generation? Are you a royal priesthood? a holy nation, a peculiar people? Do you show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light? Hmm. Listen, listen. Years ago, I did a video called Don't Blend In, something like that. Don't blend in with the darkness. You know, when I was young, I'm, I'm going to share this with you real quick so you kind of get where I'm going. When I was young, I used to hang out at a nightclub. And my family is very articulate. But I wanted to be down, down to earth, down with it, in with the in crowd. You know, that's I'm dating myself with that phrase. But anyway, so I hung out with the folks. I thought we're in with it. They had it going on. And I talked like them. I walked like them. I waddled like them. I quacked like them. And one day I did a videotape. Not a videotape. An audio tape of our family. We had a gathering. I don't know if it was Thanksgiving, Christmas or something. And some of our relatives were there as well. And I just stuck the recording off to the side. I forgot I was recording, y'all. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to catch everybody and we'll laugh about it afterwards. But I totally forgot the recorder was on. And I'm engaged with the conversation and clowning with the family and all that. And later on, when I realized, oh, the recording, I waited till that night to play it back after everybody was in bed, put my little earphones on. I was horrified. <laughs> Do you know what I sounded like? Here I am with all these intelligent, articulate, eloquent people. And I'm talking like a street thug. I sounded like the biggest idiot in the room. I was so embarrassed. That right there told me, I need to take speech classes. I want to take phonetics. I want to take speech and diction. I want to take... I wanted to get my, my act together. And I decided I was not going to sound like the dummy I was trying to, the dummies I was trying to fit in with. I'm going to sound like my family. I don't want to sound like I'm a stepchild. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, what I want to say to you is this. If you were to be set on an assignment, if someone were to come up to you, and say, I'm from the government, and we need you to represent this group. We need you to be the spokesperson. Now, when you get around these people, there is no, uh, let me see, how can I say that? There's no foul language, no dirty jokes, no smoking, no drinking, no chewing, no doing anything that's tacky. You have to dress very professionally. Your hair, your shoes, you have to be well-groomed. So get yourself together. We have a dress code. We're going to have you take that home so you can study it. 
We'll have pictures so you can get examples of what we're talking about. And then when we have this meeting, we need you to be the spokesperson. We'll have the script, but you have to ad lib here and there. Just make sure that there is no profanity. Make sure that your English, your diction, your grammar is on it, baby. Because these people are high level intellectuals and they will know what you are if you do not have command of the English language. So imagine that. Imagine. Go with me now down, down uh, fantasy lane. All right. Now here you are. You have to represent. Do you know how hard it's going to be for you not to cuss all day? Um, uh, you can't use your cell phone. You can't take calls, make calls, everything. You got to be right there at their beck and call. And you have to put your best presentation forward the whole day. That's going to take some serious discipline, isn't it? So it actually behooves you days and weeks before that time arrives to practice on your free time so you don't slip and show your true colors, correct? All right. Now, saying all that to say this. Now, imagine that someone says, we need you to meet the king or queen of England. And there are going to be other forms of royalty from other cu countries. And we need you to be the spokesperson for them, for us, to them. Now, imagine how you're going to have to present. They've got to teach you what fork to use first, how to use your napkin if you sit at the table, and at the banquet table. You've got to learn all kinds of etiquette. Oh, my goodness. That's a major learning experience right there. Because you're in the presence of royalty. So, what I ask you is, if you're in the presence of the king of kings, the lord of lords, the most high God, how much more should you present yourself <laughs> How much more? Whether you are alone or in the presence of company, you are always in the presence of the Most High God. So do you insist on keeping your language as clean as a whistle? Do you insist on guarding your attitude so that you don't show the ugly side of your flesh? Hmm? How do you present yourself to the Most High King when you're studying, when you're doing your homework, when you're when you're preparing for an assignment on the job the next day, when you're trying to do something in the house, doing a project and things go wrong, are you cussing up a storm? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. But you're in the presence of the Most High King. He's right there in your house. Now, if you're not going to curse and use profanity in front of royalty, in front of diplomats, in front of aristocrats? How dare you present yourself in a sloppy manner in front of the king of kings, the lord of lords? How dare you? Huh, perish the thought. Because if you really want to know what it's like to be in front of royalty, you're in the presence of royalty 24-7. And royalty is in your presence 24-7. If you belong to him. If not, he's still around. And you're still in his presence because the earth is the Lord's. Psalms 24. And the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. No matter where you run, you can't hide. 
You can't peep and hide, slip and slide. You can't sneak under the blankets and slip around the corner and whizzy whizzy out of the corner of your mouth. You, oh, you can't even think to yourself without God, the ever-present, the omniscient, the ever, the all-knowing, all-seeing God, knowing exactly what's going through your mind. <laughs> yeah, you didn't realize that, did you? You're in the presence of the Most High King. Represent. Clean yourself up. Dress up. Get it together. Get some class about your character, baby. You're in his presence all the time, whether you're in the car, fussing at the drivers going down the street, or cussing at them, listening to rap, the rap that talks about the bees and the hoes, and what you're going to do with them, what they're going to do with them. Hmm? What are you listening to? Would you play that kind of music in front of the Queen of England, the, 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 the Prince of Wales, hmm? the King of Nigeria, the head of the, the Virgin Islands? What would you do? How would you present yourself in front of all these high-level people? Hmm? Yeah, the reason I'm bugging you about that is because we have gotten so sloppy, so slack, so casual, so disrespect, disrespectful, so contemptuous dealing with the presence of God. Why? We don't see him, but we forget he sees us. We forget that part. And if you're a child of the Most High King, why are you not acting like it? Huh? Why are you not staying away from the things that a child of the Most High King would never participate in? Why are you not hanging with people that you know you should not hang with? Why are you going to places you know you shouldn't go? Why are you doing what you know you should not be doing? Because you forget with an invisible God that you are always in the presence of the Most Hi, King! Well, let me remind you, baby, you are not alone, nor am I. So we must always watch how we carry ourselves. We must always watch what comes out of our mouth, what we feel, not just say, what we feel in our hearts. Yeah, that wrath, Psalms 37 has a verse in it that says, forsake wrath, doesn't it? Yeah. So how should you carry yourself? Verse 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold. Oh, they'll see it. Glorify God in the day of, visita of visitation. Hmm. Be careful. Be careful how you represent the Most High King. Be careful if you are a spokesman. Huh? Be careful what comes out of your mouth when you're not presenting. Be careful. Because God is all-knowing, God is all-seeing, God is ever-present. No matter where you are, no matter where they are, no matter where the other people on the other side of the planet are, or deep down on the ocean floor, God is with each and every one of us. Now you know that's a powerful God with all the people we have on this planet. That he knows exactly what we think, exactly who we are, exactly what we're made of. He knows our strengths, our weaknesses. Why? He created us in love. Like Dr. Dotson said, we might have made a mess of it. But God can redeem us 
and we can take a good long bath, baby. So let's see all that he wants us to be. And let's try our best, whether in public or alone, to measure up, to raise that Holy Ghost bar so that rather than making our father angry and frustrated, we actually put a smile on his face because he at least sees us trying. Amen. God bless you as you present yourself. Romans 12, 1, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the least you can do. The Bible says, your reasonable service. It is reasonable, you know. For the Most High King, don't you think? All right. God bless you.